Okay, so today I'm going to tell you about the uh, Thumbs Up Pebble. This is the end product um, that we unveiled with our partner APSA. Um, and it is the APSA Payment Pebble, uh, built by Thumbs Up. Thumbs Up is a South African company. We're based in South Africa. We are staff South African and, and we're making this technology at, at present. Essentially, the Pebble is uh, you know, it's a device that I wanted to make extremely beautiful. I wanted to make it aesthetically pleasing. When you hold it in your hand as a product, it, uh, it, it has some weight to it, so it feels qualitative. It has a lens and a display on it. Um, on the display is a holographic stamp, and that stamp is just some level of effort by us to enable physical repudiation. So you know when you pick up the device, there'll be a little holographic print there, and, and you know that this is a genuine pebble, um, that this is not a cloned pebble or anything like that. Um, it has a beautiful paper ink display with, with a beautiful contrast, and we, we, we did that because the device has the ability to render graphics on screen, and uh, it securely displays the merchant information and the amount to be paid in a secure manner. Um, the back plate of the device, you'll see that it says APSA. Um, uh, it is beautiful when you hold it in your hand. Lots of design has gone into it to make it look aesthetically pleasing. Um, and the way it essentially works is that you know the user will plug this into a mobile phone, and I've, I've got a mobile phone here, so essentially plug it in, and you would insert the chip and pin that way, uh, you know, MAG works that way. So if I had to turn the device around, you can see that there's where the MAG swipe occurs, and uh, you know the chip and pin is right behind the display. And one of the things that we focused on really, very hard is is the aesthetics of it, and again to make it pleasing. But the card is always facing the user. You'll notice that when the phone's in your hand with the pebble plugged in. It's, the card's always facing the user, so it's front-facing. What the user's doing a mag swipe at the back, the card's facing. So the mag swipe would essentially happen, no, I'm doing it the other way around. But that way is the way mag would happen. The card's always facing. And I think that's important from a user aesthetics perspective. And the card, from a security, visual security perspective, is not showing away. So we support, uh, like I said, both chip and pin and mag in a single device. Uh, the device plugs into the 3.5mm audio jack. It'll work across Android. It'll work across iOS, so your Apple devices, your tablets. It'll work um, on certain BlackBerry models. We're looking at about three or four BlackBerry models, so the, the different curves and then also the, the BlackBerry Bold. So let me give you some more insight into the guts that sits inside the Pebble. The, uh, you know, this is just the back plate removed of the Pebble, and we've essentially removed the mag head, um, and, 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 and I'll get into that a little bit in terms of the circuitry, but just to show you physically how it looks when it enters into the device. This is a transparent back plate. So when it goes in, it's sitting very securely and you can see it sitting on, and resting on top of the, the chip. Um, when you're swiping, you can see that the track runs along there and the mag head is sitting on the device. We're pushing the, the, the card onto the mag head and, and essentially this is the back plate circuit board that comes together. The device is made up of two circuit boards, you know, the back plate that handles um, uh, uh, mag swiping and then the front plate that handles chip and pin. So let me, let me talk about some aspects of the product. The, you know, some, some feature sets of it. Like I said, it plugs into the 3.5mm audio jack. This on launch, this device will be fully EMV level 2 and PCI, PTS and SRED certified. So the same criteria for security and certification that goes into a point of sale will go into the, the Pebble. Now you'll notice that the Pebble does not have any inputs for charging. And the reason is we actually inside the device we have a rechargeable battery and we are harvesting energy from the mobile phone. So every time it plugs in it's charging that battery and it has about 450 recharges so from zero up to back up to fully charged 450 times it can do about 300 transactions per charge and again our focus was on extreme simplicity that no configuration is required on the phone no reconfiguration is required on the device not even for power um, if the device lays on a shelf for three or four months, you plug it into the phone and it will literally heal back up in a minute or two. I think that's quite a unique feature that you don't require a power cable. But, uh, you know, b besides that, the, the device lifespan is about two to three years. So it's extremely simple. When you are onboarded by APSA, 
you will get and receive your Pebble, it will be pre-configured, you will plug your Pebble into the phone and then you'll be automatically recognized. This was our focus again on extreme simplicity. We didn't want a device that, you know, we steered away from Bluetooth essentially. We, we just thought if you give a plumber a device that spoke wirelessly via Bluetooth to the phone, you create complexity. You know, the, the plumber has to configure the phone. Uh, Bluetooth is inherently erratic. The pairing will be forgotten. Um, and it creates technology for the sake of technology and essentially puts technology in the plumber's hand. What we wanted to do is just make it extremely simple. Let the plumber, the electrician, you know, get the device pre-configured to their merchant account during the onboarding process, plugs it into the phone, and he or she can simply transact. So I'm going to take you through that transaction process now. Uh, I'm going to do it an actual uh, transaction. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the back plate on and uh, so we can do the charging and you'll see as soon as it's connected there it says thumbs up make, making it easy uh, on there. The device is extremely tamper proofed you know uh, that's why the display is actually fixed there's a lot of tamper proofing that's gone on and when you put the back plate onto the device you'll see the back plate actually has a little extension coming out that goes right through the circuit board into the device and that again is for tamper proofing. Uh, peace of mind that this device is secure. So I'm going to launch, here's my credit card, I'm going to launch as the plumber, the first time I get my Pebble in the mail, I'm actually going to launch and download the mobile app. So here's the APSA mobile app, I hit the little mobile app, it says APSA, um, you know, you can go and get your Pebble, get onboarded, there's the learning center, etc. Again, no configuration is required. Plumber has just downloaded the app, first time, got the Pebble, opens up the box, plugs the Pebble in, and... It just knows who it is. You can go into purchase history immediately and take a look at all the transactions that have occurred. Um, you can view those transactions on a map. You can see um, you know, where they took place on a Google map. We rendered today, this week, all time. We'll continually improve this merchant management and transaction handling capability, but essentially this is the gist of it. So Fixit Plumbers has done those transactions over the last little bit. Sorry, I just double clicked there. So Fixit Plumbers. Now, I'm going to start the transaction. So literally, I start the transaction. And I say, you know, Duncan owes me two hundred and you know fifty four and an eighty eight cents. I enter. Um, it will say, please insert the chip on my X swipe card now. And on the top, it will display securely the amount, and it's asking for the card to be inserted. So I will insert the chip and pin card into the device. It says checking card, and it says that's the amount and that's the pin. Now, this is our patented, our globally patented pin entry method. If you take a look at the device, right now what's happened is it has generated a unique random number inside the pebble. Now this uniquely generated random number um, is a random number that's generated for every single transaction. So the phone never knows what's happening on the pebble. The pebble never discloses anything to the phone. All the phone does is allow the user to change the random number to whatever their particular number is of that digit of their pin. Um, and like I said, this is patented, um, and this is a world-first method for pin entry. So you'll see an asterisk pops up underneath pin. And when you touch the scroll wheel, it shows you the unique random number. Now, as I'm moving this, my pin, I've just pseudo-generated this on this card, is actually um, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, for this particular card right now. So if I move this, I will go down. And the, this is not the phone entering it. This is the phone on an entropy of plus 1 changing the random digit to get to the number that is mine. So I'm going to go down as 678. So 1, I hit next. I go down and 2. And oh, you'll see there's a unique number that pops up in every time I hit next. And then 4. And that's my pin, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I submit my pin. It says pin OK. It says, please confirm that you are paying Fixit Plumbers. These are just EMB standards. I say, yes, I want to pay Fixit Plumbers. It says, authorizing, does the necessary secure handshaking. And only at that point, it's doing the secure handshaking. It says, payment approved. And here's our rich receipting capability where I say, please send a receipt to staff, Stafford. Let me just get that right. Stafford at, you know, thumbs up. thumbs up dot com done and same payment approved you want to get your receipt in mail 
click on OK, and it will send off the mail. Now the mail will, inside of it, it will contain a little Google map, an annotation for where the transaction took place, and the whole details associated with the transaction. Now we, we can do SMS, we can do MMS, and we can do email. In that field, I could have put in a mobile number, and it would have SMS the details for me. Um, as soon as that's done, you take the pebble out, and um, you know, it just goes back to square one. So as simple as that. It's absolutely no configuration. You plug the pebble into the phone, and it simply works. Our big focus here was not to give more technology to the plumber, but essentially to make a plumber's life differently. Um, I, I, the, the, the beauty of the product too, it's, it's, it's cost to manufacture is sub $40, US dollars. So it really makes it a cost effective device uh, for an acquirer to take to market and essentially it's a throwaway product. If it breaks, don't put someone on a conference call or a call with the, the plumber, just send the plumber another one. Um, we. You know, our design principles and philosophy of the company is essentially to make the iPod of payment devices or the iPhone of payment devices. And we're very excited that this will be released to the market in Q1 in South Africa 2013 via APSA. Um, and it will be called the APSA Payment Pebble. And when it gets released, it will be released with a API. And we're very excited about this API because this is going to allow people to write third-party applications to the Pebble. So it won't just be the APSA application running on a mobile device that will accept card payments. Um, you, if you have a mobile app, we will give you an API, you'll render on the operating systems that we support, and it will speak to the Pebble. So you can literally bundle your app with this and accept card payments. So if you have an event ticketing application, a movie lookup application, you can actually do transactions, card present, chip and pin, off the Pebble inside your app. And we're very, very excited about the several world firsts and very exciting to bring this to market in Q1 of 2013. This is the technology that we unveiled last week with our partner APSA in South Africa and um, all made possible by some of the smartest engineering team um, and some of the smartest people in the world within my engineering team. And it's all because of them this is possible. So thanks, guys, and hello, world. Thank you.